Hey everybody, Luke Gordon here, and today's video is all about a very common question that I get from a lot of our clients suffering from shoulder pain, especially early on in their treatment, is whether or not they should be using ice for their shoulder pain, or whether they should be using heat for their shoulder pain, or if there's times they could be using both uh, within the same time period. Um, so the short answer is that there's pros and cons to each, and a lot of it depends on what the goal of the treatment is and what type of pain you're dealing with, whether it's a rotator cuff tendonitis versus a tendinosis versus post surgical uh, types of pain. So today I just want to kind of go through and tell you which one you should be using, uh, try to help you decide which one is going to be best for you given your situation. Again, knowing that there's different times that uh, are going to be better to use one versus the other. So again, like I said, um, I don't have a blanket rule when it comes to ice or heat. A lot of PTs or chiropractors will say only use ice all the time, you know, seven days a week, never use heat. Um, other things that are a little more towards Eastern medicine will go the exact opposite and say only use heat because it's bringing the blood flow in. Never use ice because it's slowing the blood flow down. And again, the big point for this video is that it depends on what you're dealing with and what you're hoping to accomplish by using the heat or the ice. Uh, so let me give you a common example. If you just had, if you have rotator cuff tendonitis, which is your most common cause of, of shoulder pain. So you've got pain out on the side of your shoulder here. Usually it's kind of coming down the outside of the arm. Maybe you've got some impingement as well, where certain like cross body movements or trying to twist your arm behind your back or reach behind you hurt. And that the shoulder is really painful, especially with certain activities. Um, so that's kind of like a tendonitis. Um, tendonitis, usually you've only had it for, let's say, less than a month, less than a few days. It flares up when you throw a ball or do certain activities. If you're having times when it really just flares up on you, uh, that's when I would tend to use ice. So you get an ice pack on there, gel pack, whatever you've got, and you're going to cool the whole area down because now it's inflamed, it's irritated, it's not happy. That makes sense to use ice. And good rule of thumb is that if you feel better after using it, you're probably onto something. So you use ice, ice for 15 minutes or so, cool it down, that's great. So that's kind of like where shoulder pain might begin for a lot of people. It's Again, it hasn't been going on for very long. You don't suspect any long-term wear and tear or long-term damage. It's a newer thing. It just flares up when you lift weights, throw a ball, uh, play with your dog, play tennis, you know, play racquetball, whatever you're doing. Uh, ice makes sense then. You're just cooling it off because it gets irritated. So that makes sense for a tendon tendonitis type thing. So again, rotator cuff tendonitis, uh, supraspinatus tendonitis, infraspinatus tendonitis, impingement, whatever you want to call it. Now let's say same type of pain, same presentation. It's out here. It's definitely still rotator cuff related, but you've had it now for several months or maybe on and off for several years. And now you may get flare ups here and there, but for the most part, you just have pain all the time, which is really common. You just have pain kind of all the way throughout the day. Yes, it'll get worse with certain activities, but it just kind of is there. It's not getting better. At this point in the game, you're probably not so much a tendonitis as you are a tendinosis. Now, I've got a good video on that. Uh, I'll pop it up above here so that you can see it if you're trying to figure out what you have. It's very important to this whole decision-making process when it comes to heat and ice. Um, so if you've got that going on, now uh, what we're looking at with the tissue is you actually need more blood flow to the area. So in this, in this situation, in my opinion, and in my experience with clients the last 14 years, is that heat works much better. So heat's gonna help bring the blood flow to the area. Now again, keep in mind in this situation, your shoulder isn't really flared up. It's not super painful right now. Um, it's not going up and down. It's just kind of constantly painful and you've had it for a while. Now, the same type of shoulder pain, though, let's say you do overdo it today. You went out and lifted weights or did some overhead activity. You painted, you did some yard work, whatever you did. And now it's really flared up and it's like sharper pain, more intense. Then I would say ice it. So you have this balance, I think, that depending on if your pain just fits one kind of category or the other, you could preferentially just use heat or ice, like I just mentioned. But if you have long-standing pain and at the end of the day you overdid it, you could do both. So again, you might start the day using heat, get the blood flow moving to the area, loosen up the shoulder. If it feels good, there's your rule of thumb. It feels good, great. The hot shower feels good in the morning, great. Heat it up, get things nice and flowing. Uh, end of the day, if it's really flared up, then you might use ice. So I know it's a tiny bit confusing, but I'm actually a proponent of using heat and ice in the same day if that fits your presentation and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, so again, use that as just kind of your rule of thumb. A little trial and error uh, goes a long way with this. The other thing I will say is that if you've had shoulder pain for a while, more than likely you're gonna start to develop pain up into these like upper trap muscles here, these muscles along the side of your neck. Maybe you're even getting a headache over time. A lot of times when you get pain just kind of in here through your shoulder blade, that scapular region, heat's gonna feel really good to loosen the muscles up. 
So again, um, if I had to pick one or the other, I wouldn't. Um, but I do default more towards heat for your ongoing shoulder pains. If it's post-surgical, you're typically going to want to use ice because you just had a surgery. Things are very inflamed, very stirred up, especially if you're doing like aggressive stretching. If you've got a little bit of like frozen shoulder adhesive capsulitis that you're dealing with too, you're going to want to do your aggressive, you know, therapy, your aggressive stretching and then ice it down. Um, but ultimately I tend to gravitate people more towards heat just because, uh, in, on average, your rotator cuff needs more blood, uh, blood flow, not less. Um, so that's another video too, talking about rotator cuff. I've got a lot, of, a lot of videos on shoulder pain, so keep going through those. I'll link some at the end here that I think will be helpful when it comes to like how do you strengthen, how do you get rid of pain long term. Um, but hopefully at least this video gives you a little bit uh, of an idea of whether heat or ice is going to work best for you. Hopefully it hasn't confused you. Um, before you go, if you would like and subscribe, I would appreciate that. Any questions, you can put them below. And thanks for watching.